So, uh, just a quick introduction who I am. My name is uh, Tommy Karnebom. I work as a risk management specialist at Dafo Vehicle. Uh, Dafo Vehicle Fire Protection, we are working with suppression system for buses. And my role at the company is to work with uh, the risk assessment. Uh, I do training, I do information all, and I specialize in alternative fuels. So that's a little bit what I would like to talk about today. So we see a big, uh, some, in some areas, pretty rapid uh, uh, change in, uh, in the bus market, that the bus market is going to alternative fuels. And alternative fuels, then we talk about CNG buses, we talk about LNG buses, we talk about hydrogen buses, and also, of course, electric buses. So this is ba basically what I would like to talk a little bit about today. I would like to start to talk about the electric buses. And I would like to remind you all the time that on an, electric, uh, an alternative fuel bus, it's not a bigger risk, it's a different risk. It's not a bigger challenge, a different challenge. So uh, on an electric bus, uh, the, propel the energy of the bus is the battery. And that is the uh, interesting part that is actually the new from the vehicle. Because the batteries, they by themselves, uh, it's, it's a new challenge that they can actually catch fire. Batteries can catch fire from external violence, uh, some type of electric violence, and also so you, you uh, expose them to, to, uh, to heat and cold. So basically here we need, we need to adapt the system and the buses and also the training on the personnel to know the risk of this vehicle and see if we need to do some changes. Because if there un it's unlikely, but if there should be any type of malfunction of the battery in an electric bus, the, the, the actually the, the battery will start to smoke. And that is the key for making it safer. Uh, when it comes to a combustion engine, you have regulation on, it's mandatory in Europe to have both a detection system and a suppression system. But when it comes to electric buses, you don't even have, need to have a detection system. And as a firefighter, I always know that if there is no smoke, there is no fire. If there is smoke, there is a fire. If there's a fire, there's smoke. But this doesn't come, add up when it comes to batteries because batteries, they actually start to smoke before the fire starts. So that is actually something that we can deal with because if there is a fire in a bus and the battery catches fire, you will go in, that the battery goes into what's called a thermal runaway. And if you have a thermal runaway, you will not be able to put that fire out. But if we use the information we get from the smoke, then we can actually detect start to cool and stop the batteries from catching fire. So here is something, a new challenge, the bus are working in a new way. So then we need to train drivers, we need to drive the, the operators, we need to train uh, the, uh, the service and maintenance personnel on the batteries because the batteries are the new risk and we need to have training and in, information about that. And when it comes to the CNG and the hydrogen buses, they are more or less the same. It is uh, uh, the, 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 um, the energy that brings the vehicle forward is, uh, is concealed in, in pressure tanks. And those pressure tanks can be anything from 250 up to 700 bars. And that itself is not a risk, but if there is some heating of that tank, the, the, uh, the things inside the vehicle will, will start to, uh, inside the tank, the hydrogen or the CNG will start to expand. And then if we don't release the pressure, the tank can actually explode. And we had some type, we had some of these accidents. We had a CNG bus a couple of months ago in, uh, I think in Italy. And what happened there is what is released the pressure of the tank. That is a good way. But the interesting part, and that's making it a new challenge, is that you get a jet flame out from that bus that was over 15 meters long. And that is a new challenge. That brings more energy to the bus and you can actually get hit by that one. And it, when it comes to hydrogen, hydrogen is the same type of fuel, uh, fuel as uh, CNG, but it re operates with high pressure. It can actually be up to 700 bars in the tank. So then, that, uh, then the, the jet flame out from that bus can actually be over 40 meters long. So that is also a new challenge that we need to bring up to, uh, up, to, up to the table so we can talk about it. Because also, if, we, if this uh, system malfunctioning, you will get a, actually an explosion on the bus, and we don't want that. But you need to heat up the, uh, the, the hydrogen and the CNG for that to happen. 
So basically we need to protect also different areas on the bus, not just only the motors and the combustion engine. We need to, we need to protect the, the hydrogen or the CNG tank and also in uh, a hydrogen bus there is batteries. So then you need to protect the batteries also. So, and the new thing with this type of vehicle is that you need to have information on how to deal with this and way forward. So you, as I said before, on electric buses, it's the same on uh, hydrogen and CNG buses and LPG buses. You need to uh, train everyone that can operate or use these buses because, and also the owner. Because if we have a damaged electrical bus, uh, then it, it has been, uh, been involved in an accident. It has gone into a tunnel and get some, uh, get some marks on the battery pack on, that's often placed on the roof of the bus or in the bottom. Then the bus needs to be standing in a quarantine place. A quarantine place is a place where the bus needs to stand for at least 14 days before you start before you can start working on the bus and it needs to be completely safe. And the challenge here is that you don't have that area because there can't be anything close to that bu damaged bus within 15 meters in a round circle. Tell me a bus depot that has this already. We don't have it, and we don't have the area for that. And then, then you can, but you can work together, and we can build uh, small barriers between the buses, and it needs to be weather, weatherproofed also. So this is new information that we need to share with each other, so we can go forward, because we don't need the highlights we had this summer from Paris, from London, from Germany, when it says electric buses catch fire during transit, during operation. We don't need that, and then we need to work together and. When I say work together, please don't forget the fire brigade. The fire brigade, we are the ones that's responding to the fires. So if you have a local fire brigade at where your bus depots are or where you operate, please contact them, Sh uh, invite them to see the bus, tell them how the bus is working, where everything is located on the bus. Then if there is, God forbid, any fires in a bus depot, then the fire brigade had knowledge already, so they can help you better. If you help us, the fire brigade would help you better. So all about information and adapting to this new invention.